Welcome to the first Pine64 community update of the year. In this update, we will be discussing some PinePhone Pro news, some progress on the Pine Note, and a lot of Pine Time news. Also, thanks to Lucas, JF, Brian, and Samuel for helping with this video, and ch also check out my channel, Pizza Loving Nerd, for more open source things. To start off, if you are a PinePhone owner, please check out this poll we are conducting to learn more about the PinePhone community. It should take less than two minutes, and we will be posting the numbers and making a report based on the poll results. The poll itself can be found on our blog, and a direct link to it will be in the video's description. Next up, we will be hosting quarterly Q&A sessions, and these will be hosted live on Discord, with queries being picked from the live chat. These Q&As will also be recorded and uploaded to YouTube, Odyssey, and Peertube. The first session is scheduled for Friday, January 21st at 9 o'clock p.m. UTC. Finally, Chinese New Year begins February 1st, at which point all production, shipping, and related activities will come to a halt. Pine store sales, info, support, and product teams will all be off to spend time with their relatives, and all shipping and support queries will be delayed until the second half of February. So, do note that if you order hardware in late January, it might not ship until late February. Next up, we are exploring the possibility of new PineBook Pro and PineTab batches. If LCDs are reasonably priced after Chinese New Year, then we plan on having a production run for March, so stay tuned. In terms of PinePhone news, there's a lot of news to unwrap. Pre-orders for the PinePhone Pro Explorer Edition are now open, and first production run keyboard cases should have already shipped. While the PinePhone Pro software is progressing very fast and we are in a lot better position software-wise than the original PinePhone Braveheart, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done to bring full functionality to the device on the software end. Also note that software support for the keyboard case still needs to be ported to the PinePhone Pro, although that is actively being worked on. In terms of software issues, the Mobian team is confident that the PinePhone Pro will be daily drivable before 2022 ends. The phone performs very well in all desktop environments and has no known hardware design flaws as of this video being posted. However, the software still has four important issues that haven't been completely resolved yet. 1. The PinePhone Pro cannot wake from suspension. 2. Battery level reporting is poor. 3. Cameras do not work. And 4. Audio call quality is poor. The PinePhone Pro failing to resume from suspend is the biggest issue, preventing users from daily driving it because of the short runtime of the PinePhone Pro. But once this is fixed on the software side, its battery life should be about the same as the original PinePhone in terms of the standby time. In other PinePhone Pro news, LunaOS and Gentoo have been ported over to the PinePhone Pro, and ports of OpenSUSE and Fedora are also in the works. You can see all the OSs currently available for the PinePhone in the software releases section of the wiki. And lastly, the PinePhone Pro now has FCC and CE certifications. In terms of news for the original PinePhone, Dank12 tested out Pico 8 as well as Tick 80 on the PinePhone with the keyboard add-on and even got the Pico 8 port of Doom working. The Maui project has also announced that they're working on a new desktop environment intended to adapt to different form factors including desktops, tablets, and phones. While this is in the early stages and only has one very early testing release, you can expect an alpha later in March. According to the recent community news post on the Sailfish OS forums, the PinePhone accounts for 40% of all Sailfish OS installs on devices not supported by Jala themselves, such as the Xperia 10. This means that the PinePhone has more than double the installs of the second place phone, which is the Xperia XZ2, and this is exciting because it shows how the PinePhone is able to impact some other mobile communities outside the Android space, and perhaps we'll see another port of Sailfish OS for the PinePhone Pro. Lastly, OpenBSD has also been demonstrated to work on the original PinePhone, although a lot of work is still needed to get it to a fully functional state. Among the other issues encountered, errors flood the console and various sensors of the device do not read correctly. Powering off the device also doesn't fully work and the CPU is ran at the wrong clock speed. However, it is still extremely promising to see this kind of progress in the BSD space for the PinePhone. With the announcement of the RK3588 at the Rockchip Developer Conference of 2021, we are able to talk more freely about the RK3588 SoC. This is a more powerful chip with the GPU alone being 10 times more powerful than the RK3399, which is the current SoC in the PineBook Pro and PinePhone Pro. We will be getting these chips in mid to late summer, however it will be unlikely that there will be complete mainline support working or GPU drivers within a year of the chip being delivered. 
That said, we will be watching the development of the RK3588 very closely. Due to the progress made on the Quartz 64 and Pine Note platforms in recent weeks, the Pine Note is now available to developers and enthusiasts without the need for a purchase coupon. It is considered to be an enthusiast only device at this point as there will be no default OS or UI for the Pine Note when it ships. If you intend to purchase a Pine Note, you will likely have to build your own Linux system from scratch to use this device. However, much progress has been made over the past month, including getting Linux up and running on the device, and developers are starting to familiarize themselves with the device and getting their favorite Linux distributions to run alongside the factory Android image. People are already running Alpine Linux and Debian with a NixOS port in the progress and other distributions on the way. There have also been some major kernel milestones, including the release of a functioning DRM driver for the device's e-ink controller and panel, and this accomplishment is important because it proves the viability of the product as a mainline-first Linux e-reader, and it allows developers to start optimizing their graphical applications for e-paper displays, similar to how Linux apps had to be brought up for Linux smartphones to fit the PinePhone screen, for example. Applications will also need to function smoothly on a slow updating grayscale display, which may include removing animations, maximizing contrast, and avoiding conveying information through color. To be clear, the device driver is not complete yet with only support for basic grayscale waveforms, and more work will need to be done for anti-ghosting waveforms and the fast monochrome waveform for pen input. However, it is still exciting to see it working on multiple desktops, including GNOME and XFCE. Mainline-based kernel-enabled USB LTG functionality has also been enabled, which means development can now happen directly on the device with a physical keyboard. Further updates have also brought support for the touchscreen and audio playback, which leaves Bluetooth and the microphone being the only hardware unsupported on the device. A few days into the new year, AffiniTime 1.8.0 has been released. This is an interesting release as it brings new features for end users and prepares the ground for future functionalities. Some of the new features include a more secure Bluetooth connection that works by protecting the connection with a pass key that is displayed on the Pine Time and requested by the companion app, which means that only your devices can connect to your watch. It also encrypts the communication, which means that no one will be able to intercept the notification sent from the companion app to your watch. And it also allows the companion app to reconnect faster and more reliably to the watch. This feature is optional, but we recommend companion apps to enable this by default so we can remove the unsecured connection mode in a future release. As for other features, Chimes allows you to notify yourself with a vibration every time either an hour or half hour passes. ShakeWake allows you to wake the watch by shaking your wrist, and there is now a trip meter in the step app. The new AffiniTime update also includes a new weather service API which will allow AffiniTime to display weather data sent by the companion app, and while there isn't a weather app yet, the update includes this API so that companion apps can integrate this API in their app while work is being done on building a weather app. Now one issue with the Pine Time is the fact that its flash memory is only 512 kilobytes, and that memory is filling up really quickly as more features are being added. Luckily, the Pine Time is equipped with an additional 4 megabytes of flash memory. The goal is to use this additional memory to store all static assets and free some space in the main flash system. The first step towards this was taken a few months ago with a file system in this memory and an API to interact with this file system. This will be how companion apps can read and write files and even update things like fonts and bitmaps. There is still a lot of work to do however before users can send custom graphics, but progress has been made. Finally, a new version of Gadget Bridge came out with a step counter that integrates with AffiniTime. This will display the count of steps and a graph of historical data. In terms of Pindio news this month, we have released the PinePhone LoRa add-on case as well as a USB LoRa adapter. The LoRa USB adapter brings LoRa connectivity to any computer or single board computer equipped with a USB port, and the PinePhone case, well, brings it to the PinePhone. Software support is very small for now, but the source code for JF's driver has been published for both devices. This driver is still very basic and allows to send and receive raw LoRa messages. This repo contains a chat app demo that allows you to send and receive text messages over LoRa. Lepionyi continues his experiments with Apache NutX on the Pindio stack and wrote an article on running LoRaWAN on NutX, which you might be interested in even before the Pindio stack is available because of all the interesting information about embedded software including LoRaWAN and NutX. So that's the video, we're wrapping it up now, and I'll see you next month for the next video.